Hello everyone, my name is Simon Kura and welcome to the Guide for the Interaction System Starter Pack. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take the Interaction System Starter Pack and port it over to a brand new project or a current project that you've already been working on to get all of the systems set up and ready to go for you to begin development. So as you can see, I've opened up a blank Unreal Engine 5 template and now I've imported two external content packs. Now these content packs are not included in the Interaction System Starter Pack. I'm just simply using them to demonstrate how easy it is to add functionality to external assets. Without further ado, um, once you download the Interaction Systems Starter Pack project, this is the screen that uh, you'll open to. And as you can see, we can press play and begin interacting with all of these different features. We have the button, the door, the pressure plate, and then all of these other different features, which you have already seen in the showcase video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the content browser, right click on the interaction system folder and click migrate. Now uncheck the box that says data smith and then click continue. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be going to and navigating to our current project and we want to go to the content folder. And basically we're just going to click select folder. So now what we've just done is we've migrated the content from the interaction system starter pack to our current project. However, there are still systems and things that we need to add. For example, let's open up the map that we were in in the project file uh, before, and let's just set our game mode to GM underscore game mode. Now, this is just our general game mode, and um, it allows us to possess the pawn that is included in the starter pack. Since this is a blank project, before we continue, we need to go to the project settings. We're going to add three action mappings. The first one is going to be jump, and I'm going to set this to the space bar. Then we have interact. I'm going to set this to the E key. And then we have the throw. And I'm going to set this to the F key. And then we have four axis mappings. The first one is move forward. Second one is move right. And then we have turn. And then we have look up. Now for move forward, we're going to set the W key and the S key. And we want to set the scale for the S key to be negative one. And for move right, we're going to have the D key and the A key. And then the scale for the A key is negative one. And for turn, we are going to use the mouse X input. And then for look up, we're going to use the mouse Y input. And we want to set the scale for mouse Y to negative one. So now we are done in our project settings. And as you can see, we can move and interact with the project. So now since uh, I'm going to be showing you how to implement different functionality into your um, other projects. I'm just going to go uh, through a quick breakthrough of the project. So we're going to start off with the connections. The connections are basically any object that you want to respond to interactions. For example, a door is the connection. A light bar is a type of connection. These are types of connections because they respond to the inputs. Now that leads me to inputs. So we have three um, main classes. We have the button class, the BP underscore input, and we have the BP pressure plate. You can expand on these. You can add a lever. You can add a slider. You can add a bunch of different uh, types of inputs, but these are the ones that are included. So the input class, uh, it basically calls an update um, once it's interacted with. For example, uh, each input has a reference to a connection array and an input sync array. Now, the reason why we have these two arrays is because Sometimes you want buttons to sync states. Um, as you can see with the buttons on either side of this door, we want the, state, the states to sync uh, between each other. So that's what those are for. And the connections array is a reference to what the input will uh, change the state of uh, once the input is interacted with. For example, the door is under the connections array of this button and this button and the pressure plate. Um, another example is these two buttons 
have references of sync states to each other. And both of these have connections to this light bar. Um, and I can show you that right now when I click these buttons, as you can see, the states between them sync. So that's just a general overview um, of the different types of inputs. And then if I go to the under the and if I go to the items folder, as you can see, we have a bunch of different items here and the master items here. This item underscore breakable is a subclass, but it's still a master for these breakable objects here. So that's why it's in the masters folder. But basically, the functionality is all derived from the under uh, the BP underscore item. And in this class, all of the blueprint interface implementable events are under the BPI interaction graph, which you can find just under the event graph here. And you can feel free to add uh, functionality, but this is the core functionality for this interaction system where um, all the logic is placed. And um, it's super, like it's commented, so you'll be able to read it easily. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, that's just a general overview of the plugin. Now, if you want to make different item types, um, and the reason why you do this is because you would want different objects to be like interacted with. For example, you could have a consumable item type where you don't actually pick it up you consume it immediately. Um, that's something you can throw into here. And um, you would add a new item type and then you would go to your player. And instead of actually picking up the item, um, as you can see here, instead of picking up the physics object or picking it up and equipping it, you would have a new um, section down here, which you would say consume item. And then under the consume item, you would destroy the item, but then plus 10, whatever. So this is where you would add um, your own functionality and expand the plugin to fit your game. So without further ado, let's get into the interaction side of things. And I'll basically be showing you how to, and how to use this and plug it and tie it into your game. So I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this how to implement and I'm going to open up one of the demonstration maps. Okay, so now that we're in the um, Polygon sci-fi space um, asset pack, um, we're going to add different functionality to like, let's say we're going to add functionality to these crates right here. So the first thing we would do is we would go into your folder that you want to um, have your blueprints stored in and we're going to go to add blueprint and we're going to type in bp underscore item because we want to add an item. Now, if you want to make it breakable, you can uh, derive it from the breakable, but we're just going to add a regular item. For the sake of keeping everything consistent, I always title my stuff like this, bp underscore item underscore crate, because that is what we're adding here. So now I am going to open this blueprint up and reference the static mesh. And we're just going to set the static mesh of the crate inside of our blueprint. And we're going to add another static mesh. Here we are. Um, and let's drag that in there. So now we have our crate. And there we go. So I'm, I'm removing these crates because that's how fast we just set up our physics-based crate, ready for us to interact with. So let's drag a few of these around, make sure our game mode is selected and as you can see just like that we have our crates and everything set up that quickly so we can stack them we can throw them um, that quickly so okay let's say the goal is to open and close this door we need a pressure plate so we can type in bp underscore pressure plate and call this bp underscore pressure plate and let's call this sci-fi now we have our pressure plate and we want to change the meshes. So I'm going to go to the meshes folder and just find some meshes to use really quickly. So let's say the top we're going to set to this mesh. And now since we have a larger plate, we want to make sure that the, the overlap volume overlaps properly. And um, just like that, we have our new sci-fi pressure plate. So 
Well, we want the pressure plate to actually do something. So let's actually make it open and close this door. So for that, we need a sliding door. Now there's the double sliding door and the single sliding door. In this case, we're just going to use a single sliding door. And let's call us BP underscore sliding door sci-fi. And um, let's copy the location, remove the old door, and drag in the new blueprint. And um, let's set the mesh of this door. Here we go. Okay, so now with the sliding doors, we have something called the closed location and the open location. And these are 3D widgets that are totally changeable. And um, we basically just want to position this where the door um, is fully opened. All right, so now that we've positioned that, we can set the connection to this door uh, from the pressure plate. And anytime we step on the pressure plate, it's going to open and close. Now, as you can see, it didn't go down all the way. So once again, we're just going to click on the open location 3D widget and move it down a bit more. And now, there we go. But as you can see, the door open and opens and closes pretty quickly. So um, let me show you how you would like tweak something like this. For example, you would go into the parent class and um, let's say we wanted the door to go slower. Well, the door animation is from zero to one seconds. So we can do something really simple. We can create a new variable and let's call this speed. And let's set this to a float, make it instance editable. And we're going to do uh, something like set play rate. But OK, first we need to get a reference from our door animation. So let's grab that and let's set rate. Here we go. And we're going to set the new rate and we're just going to pass this in here. And we can actually create this into a new function, um, set anim speed. And now we can add this here, just like that. And let's set the speed to one by default. So now that we're in here, um, let's just check that everything works. Perfect. And we can change the speed to, let's say, we want it to be 10 times slower. So it's going to take 10 seconds to open and close. Well, as you can see, when we step on here, it's going to take 10 seconds because it's basically setting play rate to 0 0.1 of one second. So now we have plenty of time to get through this door, but we can't access it from this side. So let's add like a kiosk. Um, so we can go to our how to implement folder and just add another blueprint. So we have the button blueprint and we already have something called the kiosk. Well, we're just going to make a child of that. Let's add it, rotate it. Let's move it down a bit so we can see. And let's just change the mesh. So let's have the top mesh, uh, nothing still. And then let's change it to the detail panel. Now we can position this. Once again, move the overlapping volume and scale it uh, to be more accurate. And let's actually change this to a, a light, actually. And here we go. As you can see, we have a little indicator light. There we go. So now that it's in the level, we can interact with it. And you can see the light changes color. But how do we sync this to the door? Well, first, let's add the connection. So it will actually affect the door. And then we want to go to our input sync. And we're going to drag the eyedropper and click our pressure plate. And then from our pressure plate, we're going to grab the eyedropper and click the button. So now the state of these inputs are synced. So if we open this door. Let me actually change the speed to 0.5 so it's a bit faster. There we go. So with the button, we can now open and close the door. And the states are synced. For example, uh, nothing is going to happen when I place this on the pressure plate because the pressure plate will remain on. But if I remove it, it's going to update the state of the door and update the state of the button because it's syncing the state. So now that we've done that, um, let's say there's something you want to attach to the wall to change the value of a light, for example. Well, we have something called the input slots. So let's just make a child class of BP underscore input slot. And let's call this create because we want to put crates in this input. Uh, so let's drag it here, rotate it. And um, actually, let's put it on this wall right here. There we go. 
So there's something called acceptable inputs for the input slots. And we basically just want to grab the class of the item that you want to be or the items that you want to be allowed to be placed in there. And um, for example, we set the input uh, acceptable input to crates. And now we can pick up our crate and put it in. Uh, there we go. Um, obviously, it's not the right size at all. But um, what if you want the rotation to be different? All of this is editable. For example, as you can see, um, the crate didn't rotate correctly. So what we can do is we can just open this up, grab the trigger volume, and rotate this by 90 degrees. Just so it's a bit easier. To see. So I'll show you again. Um, we can put this in super easily and it's connected. So let's make this actually open and close the door. Well, once again, we've got uh, the connections. So we can grab the eyedropper and watch how this now open and close the door. We can step on this to close and update that we can take it out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a ton of different types of interaction systems that you can set up by using this, uh, starter pack as the core. Now everything is using blueprint interfaces, so it can easily be expanded upon. So let me show you that now. We've got the BPI interaction interface and you can set, um, for example, have different things here. You can have explode item as an event or d different things to expand on. You can pass more data through. So you can have more complex functionality. So that's just one style of project. I'm going to open up the demonstration of the Polygon Fantasy Kingdom. Now, this is a huge asset pack. And there's so many different types of interactions that you can add to this asset pack. And let's start off. Let's say we wanted to add functionality to the guillotine. We wanted to open and close. We don't have anything that says open and close guillotine. But we do have... And I'll show you now um, a way to actually set this system up. For example, sliding door. Let's just call this BP underscore guillotine. There, I think that's how you spell it. Um, open it up real quick. And the only moving component would be this prop. So we can just set the mesh like so. And now what we can do is we can actually get the location. Of this we can delete this old blade and add the new blade so we can move it up and rotate it 90 degrees now once again since we're using the sliding door um, we have the open location and the closed location so we can just move this down to let's say there and let's set the speed to two but we don't have any way of actually telling it to go up or down but we do have like the kiosk that we made in the previous example and let's just set the connection to the guillotine and click play. Now, once we're in, we can just click on here. And as you can see, it opens and closes. So th there's a whole variety of different ways you can put together the already existing blueprints to fit the needs uh, of your project. I mean, the, the possibilities are, are endless with what you can do and how you can expand from this one starter pack. Um, I guess for the last example, I'm going to show you how to set up like foliage and, and drop um, and item drops from breaking like trees and stuff. So once again, just go to the blueprint class and let's type in tree. BP underscore tree underscore. Let's say this is an oak tree or something. We can drag out our tree and we can open it up and set the mesh to another tree mesh. Let's say you have... Let's say you have this tree mesh. Once we have the mesh set, we have a variable called drops. And this will allow you to specify the different item drops um, that, let's say, this oak tree can drop. So let's say it can drop all four of these for now. Um, and let's say we want it to spawn some fragments. So let's say it will spawn cube fragments or something. Here we go. So let's say it would spawn that cell and then another cell. There we go. Now, obviously, um, you would change, instead of it spawning pieces of cubes, you would have it to spawn, let's say, branches or, or leaves and stuff. But yeah, so now that once we have the tree in the level, we need a way to actually 
chop down the tree. So let's just add and let's say we want to derive this from the pickup class or the pickaxe and we want to call it bb underscore x. Well, we can just change the mesh. So let's just change this to, let's say a wire brush. Uh, I know I said X, but let's just, let's just use this uh, as an example for now. So we just want to put this on the ground where we can actually pick it up and use it. And let's pick up. So now we have our brush and we can hit the tree. And as you can see, it spawned those two broken fragments. And it's just excuse the post-processing that came with the level, but it made it super vibrant. But yeah, so it spawned the non-breakable cube, the non-breakable cylinder, and it spawned the breakable cube and the breakable cylinder. And since it spawned them pretty high up when they landed, they hit the ground. Um, and speaking of that, you can tweak the velocity and impact angle of the breakable items. If I go to the master and item underscore breakable, there are two initialization variables, impact velocity threshold, say 400, and the impact angle threshold, let's say 0.3. So we just tweaked the values. Um, and now let's see if we get it to break, which we didn't because they didn't reach that impact velocity threshold. That's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for any more plugins and any more content packs that I release in the future. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, reach out to me on Discord, or ask questions on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. I'll get back to you as soon as possible to help you uh, with the integration of this project into your project, or just help you in general with anything related to Interaction Systems Starter Pack. Like I said, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future assets and uploads, and I'll see you guys in the next one.